I will start with the broad big picture and then I would like to come to talk about sustainable future for the iron steel industry in its broader possible way. The big picture that we are dealing with has been outlined by Dato Sri Lim. There are many challenges, but I think we are entering into a new phase of the world that we will have to embrace and accept that disruption is part of the order. Compared to the period between 1989 to about 2020, we were used to this idea that uh, whatever that we see, there, there is a US unipolar structure uh, in geopolitics, in finances, we think that uh, we can move goods from anywhere as we wish. Uh, the, the theme of the era was called just in time. I think we have to accept that the theme of the, this era is called just in case. Now let me come to the steel industry. I like your title, I like your theme. You, you spoke about sustainable future. And I would like to define it in its broadest possible way that I do not want to just say sustainability links to climate alone. I want to look at sustainability in three parts. First, carbon emission and climate change. Second, structural overcapacity in the steel industry. And thirdly, financing the future of the iron steel industry. First, carbon emission. We understand climate is the challenge. Of course, there are people who say that climate is not real, climate change is not real, uh, it's not scientific, but I hope uh, within this room we all accept that climate change is scientifically a problem that we have to deal with. Rainfall is expected to reduce by 36% between 2010 and 2100, uh, 2100, year 2100, uh, and this is Malaysia's prediction. Temperature could increase around 0 0.1 to 1.6 degrees Celsius from 2040 to 2050, and there will be around 3% of in the increase in total basin area prone to flood between 2020 and 2030. I mean, some of these things we have already seen. The steel industry has to be a partner in this, because the steel industry plays a very important role, and unfortunately, it's also a big emitter. 28% of the total manufacturing emission comes from the steel industry. 28% okay, of the total manufacturing uh, emission in this country comes from the steel industry, and which translates into about 4% of the total emission of the nation. That means the steel industry contributes to about 4% of the total emission in this country. And that is a, a challenge that we will have to deal with together. Uh, whether, whether we have a 2050 target or not is a separate issue, but the point is we, we do have an emission problem, and the steel industry does have an emission problem that we have to deal with. During the Malaysian Steel Council meeting in July, we have agreed to ask and to task Malaysian Steel Industry Institute, MSI, together working with, with MISIF as well as Malaysian Steel Association, to formulate the green transition roadmap for the iron and steel industry. And I hope work is underway. But also, as a nation, I think we should see green transition as an opportunity. I know it's difficult. But I, I also hope that we see green transition as an opportunity. The new industrial master plan outlines four missions. The first mission is to increase the complexity in our economy. And we do hope that, uh, let's say the steel industry is not just producing long products, but actually move into higher grade steels. Secondly, the, the new industrial master plan talks about Tech up, technological, like technological upgrade. We would not want to see Malaysian forever dependence on unskilled foreign labor and move in the low productivity 
uh, uh, zone. We would like to see a lot more usage of automation, a lot more usage of innovation, and a lot more adoption of digitalization in, across the field. Thirdly, push for net zero. It, one of the four missions in the NIMP is clearly stated there, push for net zero is a major mission that we would like to achieve. And of course, fourthly, uh, economic security and, ins and also economic uh, inclusivity. We would like to see people being paid more and perhaps we hire less people, but we automate and we pay, we pay more to each of them so that we have a more inclusive and better Malaysia. But coming, speaking of which is that I think why the new, new industrial master plan is structured in this way is because we want to see each of the challenges that we mentioned, not as a problem, but as a potential area of investment and also potential transition, which is why I come back to these questions of uh, emission. We must admit that it's a problem, but at the same time, we must also see this as a potential area of investment, potential area of new investment and also uh, what they call upgrade. And this green transi transition that I think we can work together, uh, if it is a green transition and we should require incentive, I think we, we, we should be able to work together so that we formulate ways to ensure that there are uh, incentives to incentivize green transition, particularly in the iron and steel industry. Second point about sustainable future for the iron and steel industry is tackling overcapacity together. The Southeast Asian iron and steel industry Iron and Steel Institute estimated that in 2021, the total capacity in Southeast Asia was 75.3 million metric tonne. But the foreseen capacity by 2026 would be 151.9 million metric tonne. Whether it's, uh, the figure is accurate or not, you have to ask the uh, region. I depended on his figure. Now, China has done a, a, quite a major feat to reduce capacity inside China. What was called a supply-side reform across the board, which also with a lot of focus on the iron steel industry, has reduced Capacity just in 2016 and 2017 alone, 115 million ton of capacity in China back in 2016, 2017, and around the same period, reduced 140 million ton of induction furnace that used scrap metal to make steel. It, overall, about 150 million metric ton has been taken out of out of the capacity. Of course, the challenge is some of them came to Southeast Asia. Moving forward, the Chinese economy is likely to be a two-speed two economy. A two-speed economy in the sense that the construction-related and real estate-related sector would not see massive growth in the years to come, or at least in foreseeable future, next five years. Next five years, the real estate and construction sector in China will suffer. But at the same time, uh, the doomsayers who say that Chinese economy is not doing well, uh, there are also evidence that shows that in the tech sector, in the EV, in the in the in the what they call the technology, all sorts of technology, handphone, uh, gadget, uh, some of those sectors are witnessing double-digit growth. So it's a two-speed economy, increasingly. Unfortunately, the, the one that is related to you is the one that is not doing well. <laughs> Together with China, I, I, I would like to propose, uh, with your help, I think the Malaysian government, together with industry, should work together in a two-pronged 
the way. One is to work with China on capacity, on understanding the capacity in Southeast Asia, in Malaysia and China, and essentially have a frank dialogue on capacity. Secondly, is to also work with other ASEAN states at the ASEAN level as well as bilaterally to see what we can do about overcapacity. I mean, these are not easy tasks, as you probably know, but I personally, as well as uh, my ministry, uh, will work with, together with you on these two fronts. Uh, that is to, to have a con collaborative dialogue with China on capacity and also to elevate this agenda to some of the ASEAN discussion. Thirdly, I would like to deal with the questions of sustain sustainable future in, from the point of financing the industry. As you probably know better than me, Financing the industry has a lot to do with carbon emission, unfortunately. <laughs> it goes back to the first challenge, because the banks, the corporations that we see, that we deal with, that we that procure from you, at some point will move to scope three. Whether, whether the nation's uh, emission target, regardless of the nation's emission target, your customer at some point, whether this year, next year, whether in 2030, at some point will move to scope 3. And, and we will have to together deal with it. So financing the industry will require green transition. From the government point of view, would also require to, to tie it to the missions of new industrial master plan, the four missions I've just outlined, increasing complexity, uh, tech up, pushing for net zero, and economic inclusivity and security. And also, I think, as the industry within the nation, within this whole difficult global environment, there will need to be a lot more collaboration among the, within the industry. I understand rivalries, uh, well, politicians, right? We understand rivalries or competition, but I also think that there should be a lot more collaboration. I'm not sure whether I should, should use the word consolidation. I, I'm very careful not, not to make it too, too strong. But I do think that perhaps uh, mischief and MSA can can come together to, to form a single, single unit uh, and to also have a stronger research arm, policy research arm, whether you want to fund MSI or not, I'm not sure, but <laughs> to, to have a stronger research arm, to have a stronger research arm, policy research arm, because your industry is policy heavy. Your industry is policy heavy and you will need policy advocates and you need a lot more uh, uh, new policy ideas so that we can actually work together as government and as your, as an as a industry. Now I would like to announce here on behalf of my minister, uh, Tunku Zafro, Tunku Zafro, Tunku Aziz, uh, Minister of Miti, has uh, decided to form an independent committee uh, with the CEO of HSBC, Dato Omar Siddiq, as the chairman of a panel, to look at the iron steel industry from an independent perspective while working with you, and with, a, with an eye, in, with, and taking a fresh eye into especially how to finance the industry into the future. We are doing this because, uh, my minister decided to do this because we think that your industry is a very important industry, but there also needs to be a, pair, a pair of fresh eyes, particularly from the financial sector, but also from others who are involved uh, in the sectors. And we would like to work in a collaborative manner so that we can help together chart a future, a better future for the iron and steel industry. So with all this, uh, I officiate the, the, your session, and I wish you well. I wish you a good conference. Thank you very much.